Hello and welcome to week one of Self, Identity and Agency. My name is Chris Davies and I'm part of the teaching team in this course. Another of my responsibilities will be to deliver um, the majority of these weekly lectures as well. Uh, so you will be seeing a bit of myself um, as we move through uh, the coming weeks and months of the semester. Um, this week is very much designed to, as I said, provide an introduction and a general overview to what it is we're going to be looking at this semester. Um, each week we will list a series of um, learning objectives. So these, in effect, are the particular targets that we want to hit each week. So the idea is that you can have a look at these learning objectives at the beginning of the lecture or the beginning of the week, um, work your way through the content, and hopefully by the end of this part of the uh, course, you'll have a clear um, understanding of what it was we were alluding to when we stated um, our goals. So three things this week we're going to be looking at. The first is to explore why we ask or invite um, students to do this course. Uh, the second thing is to provide an overview of the course. So I want to talk a little bit about the overarching structure, the kind of topics we are going to be looking at each week and give a, um, a thumbnail sketch of how the various parts of it um, fit together. Thirdly, and I guess most of you, this is where your heads are at at the moment, um, is I want to say a little bit about the assessment, um, its logic and its focus. I guess that's especially important in this case because we do have an early piece of assessment in this course. Um, so, you know, it'll be worth our while, I think, just really clarifying what that's about um, and, you know, how it, how it will be working in practice. Okay, so I said, or well, we posed this question of why do we ask or invite um, you to do this course. I guess the obvious way to start this conversation is to just make the point that identity matters. Um, if you have a look at this week's readings by Jenkins, he gives a great um, set of sort of little vignettes and starts to develop some of these theories that we will be exploring over the course of the semester about why identity matters, about the um, sometimes fragility of identity and the complexity um, of it as well. Um, so I think it's uh, a very good time to be thinking about identity, our own identity and the identities of others as well. And this sort of interplay between self and other will be a recurring theme in this course so that by the end of the semester, you will hopefully have a, quite a nuanced um, set of arguments that you could develop on your thinking about those ideas and the relationship between selves and others. Um, this is also reflective of the fact that we, we organise our society in many ways through particular expressions of selfhood and identity. So this could be about our age, our sexuality, our health status, could be about at the kind of work we do, our education level. So we all come with this um, complex arrangement of identities that are sometimes uh, working together and other times can feel a little conflicted. Um, and that we experience the world via these identity markers. So we're going to spend a lot of time sort of coming back to this. I think, uh, so that's a general observation about how the world works, that we, in many ways, we govern people through their identities. The part of this course, I guess, um, that's also important from a professional development perspective is that many of you who are doing this course will be in those governing or management broadly understood positions as part of your careers. So you will become the gatekeepers of access to resources and information with your client populations. Um, so being mindful of identity, we think is really important and um, uh, necessary at this even perhaps early part of your academic career. Um, there's also a personal reason, and this is going to be another one of those recurring themes um, that we talk about freedom um, and agency. So the word agency is actually embedded into the, the title of this course. Just to sort of jump to the very end, in the, here, when we talk about freedom and agency, we're kind of using them interchangeably, those two words. And what unites them, I guess, is this idea of um, agency or freedom involves the ability to make meaningful choices, 
about how we live our lives and have those choices come to some kind of fruition or some kind of reality. So it's all very well to be able to choose to do all these things, but if you never have the chance to actually make that happen, we would say that you experience limited agency or freedom in this regard. So again, this is going to be a theme that we come back to in coming weeks. Um, at this point though, it's um, I guess it's important to make an obvious point um, that we live in a world where people have different levels of freedom and agency that are filtered or experienced through um, their identity. So just being meaningful, 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 um, and aware of the way that um, the systems and structures that we exist in, that we work in, that we enjoy exist, um, are run through with these questions of identity. So thinking about where we fit within these structures, our ability to influence them and to reflect on the way that they influence us um, is, um, is important. As I said, or as I've hinted at a couple of times now already, we live in a time when um, identity is um, awash with um, current debates and challenges. Um, old ideas are resurfacing and being rethought and potentially challenged. We're being or we're seeing or potentially we're participating in new forms of critique and analysis. And it's useful, I guess, to think of, among other things, this as a sort of um, set of conversations that are taking place, sometimes heated, sometimes uh, quite measured. But what we want to do is also jump into these conversations and use the topics and themes from the course to, um, to flesh out our own thinking on these ideas, to hear the perspectives of others and to, and to engage in their thinking as well. With the end result, hopefully, uh, being that we, um, we learn a bit from each other we're exposed to new ideas and experiences of the world and we get to a point where we might feel comfortable in sharing some of our own views on this stuff as well. So ideally, um, that's why this all really does matter. There's some questions. Um, so a lot of this is going to be about recurring themes and threads and, and other kind of metaphors like that that run through this um, semester as a whole. But I think um, there are also some sort of pointed questions that we are going to pose this week and I guess spend the next 12 weeks um, developing some answers to, among other things. So we can also relate these through a series of themes. So the first one is a theme around foundation. So what does it mean to be human? Um, philosophers have, and social thinkers and activists have been grappling with this idea for millennia. Um, so we don't probably uh, would be fairly ambitious to think that we can uh, come up with definitive answers to these things. But sometimes being aware of the questions is enough to get us into the, the right headspace. So what does it mean to be human? And early on in the semester, we're going to look quite closely at some different uh, traditions that have sought to answer that question very directly. Uh, later on, we'll be looking at some critical responses to their positions, but we'll save that for later. Um, to zero in a little more on this idea of the self, so we're thinking of it in terms of location. So where is it located? within the bigger idea of what it means to be human. Uh, next week, and then we're going to sort of gather pace about this, we're going to see and hear some very different accounts of this question of location. The Enlightenment and the Enlightenment tradition that we'll look at next week um, very much try to understand um, or locate our, our sense of identity and selfhood within our capacity to reason so that it was a very conscious, very deliberate way of thinking about human beings. Others posed very different accounts or offered very different sort of stories about this um, location or this, the important sort of qualities that define our humanity. So thinking about that sense of location will be another one of these recurring questions. Understanding, so how do we come to know our self? This, um, I guess, is a little bit loaded because Many of us struggle with these questions and will continue to struggle with them throughout our lives. But again, sometimes it's important just to pose the question and let those ideas start um, ticking away, perhaps in the background a little, and um, hopefully over the course of this semester and then months and years into the future, you get closer and closer to this idea of, of understanding.
Um, there's also going to be, as we'll see in a moment, a critical edge to this course as well. And we're exploring or we're engaging that critical content through this idea of authorship. So we'll talk a lot about stories and we'll talk about narratives and um, frames of understanding and the rest of it. But whenever we talk about stories and narratives, it's often useful because we often forget to think about, well, who gets to determine or influence what that story looks like? Um, do we have complete freedom to invent and reinvent ourselves or do we exist in a world where there are different kinds of um, constraints or limitations on that ability? Do I have the same um, authorship rights as you? What, how might we distinguish those um, different um, abilities? So what that is also hinting at are questions of power. And power is going to be another one of these um, recurring themes that we're going to look at in this course. So speaking of looking at in this course, let me just say a little bit, and I'm not going to go through these in any great detail, but just to give you a sense of the underlying logic and the uh, many and varied things that we're going to be looking at this semester. So this week, we're beginning our journey by thinking about self, identity and agency. Um, this will be a chance to just clarify some concepts and to give you a sense, as I said, about why this content matters and about um, the, the assessment. Next week, we start more deliberately with people who have sought an answer to this question of what it means to be human. So we're going to tell a historical story about different um, periods of human history and the different kind of... Um, um, stories or narratives that they develop to talk about this this thing we think of as humanness. Um, if you if your eyes wander over to the right hand um, part of your screen as you're looking at it directly, you'll also notice that next week is when our first assessment task is due. Uh, I might just pause for a second and let that the magnitude of that sink in for a moment, but we'll come back to that in a sec. So in week three, we're going to look at um, the influence of psychology and particular two kind of approaches to psychology, um, historically speaking, two influential ones. So one of them is the work of Sigmund Freud and psychoanalysis, um, which sought to very much understand and map out the mind and the sort of motivators that drive human beings. And we're going to contrast that to a um, 20th century school of thought called behaviorism that took a very different account by uh, focusing almost explicitly on outward appearance and behavior in and of itself. Um, in week four, we then start to um, add a little more um, critical uh, flavor into the discussion by thinking about sameness and difference, about universalism and diversity, and try to hold both of those ideas in mind at the same time. After that, then we in week five, we begin our look at specific, um, I guess, more established topic areas in terms of uh, different kinds of identity and identity markers. So week five is around social class. So uh, looking at the history of that idea of social class, and we're going to uh, run that into um, an Australian set of examples as well. Week six, we'll look at self in space and time, um, physical spaces and places. So this week six and seven kind of um, are, are closely related, but we are um, contrasting, I guess, the idea of our physical selves living in particular places, engaging in the world in concrete ways, and then moving on to thinking of our virtual selves as well and the relationship between the, um, the physical and the virtual um, as an opportunity for thinking about modern experiences of selfhood and identity. Um, social media platforms would be the obvious um, context for thinking about what our virtual selves look like. But what we're interested in here is the what we're calling the curation of that sense of self. So that's the deliberate process of forming and telling stories about who we are um, and where we fit. Um, the week after that, in week eight, we look at culture, race and ethnicity. So these are um, profoundly important, but also um, important reference points uh, for thinking about both um, what's happening in the world today very much, um, but also 
um, an opportunity to think about um, the consequences of what happens when um, old ideas, and we're thinking of race very much here as a social construct, as a set of ideas, and we're connecting that to um, the early Enlightenment period that we're going to be looking at next week. So how these ideas came to be put into actions, how they informed the ordering and structuring of societies, and the fact that, you know, three or four hundred years later, we're still living with the consequences of those early ideas, seeking to challenge them, to understand them, and to offer better accounts of um, humanity, selfhood, and identity. Week nine, we look at gendered identity. So this is where we pick up on ideas of gender and sexuality to, again, talk about or open a space for talking about parts of our identities that are um, deeply held. Um, but also, interestingly and importantly, we're um, living during a moment when um, a lot of the um, quote unquote, if you can imagine me making little air quotes at the moment, a lot of these more established ideas about gender and sexuality are being challenged and the rethought we're giving or being given alternative ways of thinking about these ideas and their significance for our sense of selfhood and identity. Week 10, we look at leisure and consumption. Um, so this goes to the question of, you know, picking up on the fact that we live in a, um, in many ways, a consumer-based or consumerist society. We display our sense of self in many ways to the world by what it is we buy or wear, how we present ourselves. So that week gives us an opportunity for thinking about those ideas. Week 11, we talk about death, dying and identity. Um, so in many ways, the living dead binary is something, this idea of binaries is going to be another recurring theme in the course, but we look at different the, the sort of rituals and stories that we tell around death and dying and the implications for that, uh, for thinking about identity more generally. In week 12, we look at adulthood, ageing and the life course. Um, just one point worth picking up here, because hopefully you've looked at that and sort of scratch your head for a moment and said or asked yourself why would you look at death before you look at adulthood aging and the life course wouldn't to make this make sense wouldn't you have that the other way around the argument that we're developing at those very sort of closing parts of the semester is that how we think about death dying and identity in societies like ours very much influences how we think about aging more generally and um, I don't think this is letting the cat out of the bag <clears throat> early on in the semester. Um, we struggle as a society with thinking about ageing and thinking about um, older populations, about where they fit, about um, how we support them to continue growing and developing and participating in our society. Um, and I think a large part of that, not everything, but a large part of that is this um, uh, anxiety and fear we associate or we attach to to dying. We put it off. We invest uh, millions, if not billions of dollars a year trying to sort of delay this inevitable part of our um, journey. And I think having it in that order gives us some great departure points, as I said, for thinking about these ideas quite critically. So that's a big picture um, overview of what it is we're looking at. Um, so that was in terms of topics. Now let me just take a moment to talk about this in terms of themes. So this is the same slide, but just colour coded in a slightly different way. So what this is hoping to um, reflect is that it's useful, I think, to think of this as a course in two parts. So this first part that starts this week and runs through to the end of week four is very much an account of setting some foundations, but also engaging with ideas of self-identity and agency that very much sought to tell a universal story of what it means to be a human being. Now, the people we, were looking, we will be looking at told very different stories, but beneath them all was this sort of attempt to um, set out some kind of essence that marked our humanity. So um, sometimes that was about telling a story about sameness, so saying that, you know, there is or ought to be uh, one way to be a human being, and that's one way that's applicable to all people everywhere at all times. Um, and that sort of theme 
is um, hopefully one of these sort of key takeaways from that early part of the course. So after week four, our focus then shifts to um, from a, a story about universalism and sameness to accounts that focus more explicitly on diversity and difference. So this uh, from weeks five through to 12 will have a slightly different tone to them. Um, they will in some ways be a little more critical in the way that they engage with the subject matter. Um, they will also be useful, I guess, vantage points for thinking back to those earlier discussions of universalism where, you know, people were suggesting or presenting these accounts of um, this is what it means to be a human being. But from a class perspective, it might be worth asking, you know, is everybody in the class structure experiencing that um, account in the same kind of ways? It, does everybody have the same potential to live up to that um, supposed ideal? So um, this idea of universalism and sameness and then contrasting that to um, diversity and difference is, I guess, the underlying story that we will also be um, telling in the coming weeks. To the assessment. So there are three pieces of assessment in this course. Um, if you go onto the Canvas shell and you look at the um, weekly or the, the assignment discussions or descriptions, um, you'll find more details where you'll have marking rubrics. Each of them will have a short video offering, offering you some um, additional information and some strategies for approaching these tasks as well. So I won't go any great in any great detail into that here because you've got a dedicated space for in the in the course for actually um, finding that information. But more what I want to do is just spend a moment talking about um, what it is we're asking you to do and how it fits with this more general story that we're doing, we're developing. So the first assessment task um, worth 25% of your mark is due in week two or um, uh, next Friday. Friday of the second week of semester, I should say. Um, so this is a reflective piece of writing on a um, subject that hopefully you are the world renowned expert on, um, and that is you. So you're introducing yourself. Um, what we're asking you to do then is to um, identify um, between three and five um, identity markers that you think are useful and important to telling us key things we need to know about who you are um, and where you fit. Um, and as I said, the, um, the explanatory sort of um, part of the assignment section in Canvas and the videos will talk in much greater detail about this. But it's a reflective piece and it's really designed to do two things. So on the one hand, you're identifying specific identity markers. So this could be about your age or your gender, your ethnicity, your religion, or particular interests you have, whether it be artistic or sporting, culinary, whatever it might be. Um, and then you're going a step further to thinking about the kind of influences and events that have contributed to those identity markers being important. So um, that could be about your family, say, and their migration story, about where they've come from and how that has influenced or shaped um, your family's journey and in turn influenced and shaped how you understand yourself today. Now, this is a reflective piece of writing. So I really want to emphasize um, this is not a research essay where you're having to try and find um, statistics and build tables and create causal relationships and the rest of it. But what, instead, what we're trying to do is just think about identity markers, think about life events and how those two things relate. And that's tricky enough in and of itself. Um, we'll have examples and samples. And as I said, we'll, we'll talk much more about this. The second piece of assessment due in week seven of the semester. So the first one is about ourselves. The second one is about um, an other. So this is about another person. It's designed through a um, semi-structured interview. So we give you the interview questions. We have a consent form um, that, um, that explains to the, your interviewee what it is we're doing and um, how this information will be um, managed and used um, within the bounds of this course. Um, 
So as I said, we give you um, the interview questions and those questions broadly engage with the weekly topics of the course. So the idea being is that as we work through the semester, you're figuring out and developing your own understandings of these issues. And you've also got your interviewees experiences and understandings of these same topics as well. Um, on that, so there's a, another sort of added dimension to that um, interview that's important worth that's worth noting. So the first part of that task will be about just introducing the person you've interviewed. Um, and the second part of it, as I said, is um, going through that content and then perhaps connecting their um, answers to those questions, to those interview um, interview questions, and then connecting that to the weekly content. So that will be ideas coming out of the weekly readings and lectures and, and um, discussions and the rest of it. So it's a process of, of building a pool of information and resources that you can use to sort of flesh out your position, your own position, and then contrast and compare it to another person. One quick tip that can make this um, interesting and in a lot of ways easier is to try to find an interviewee who is significantly different than yourself in, in terms of those key identity markers. Um, because what that allows you to do, I think for many people is to, um, to be exp exposed to contrasts and very different accounts of uh, people's life histories gives a, a tremendous sort of depth of understanding. Um, so being mindful of that, even at this early stage of the semester about who you might interview and ensuring that on at least a few identity markers, they are significantly different than, than you, um, can be really useful, I think. And as I said, we'll have a lot more to say about this as we progress through the semester. The third assessment task is what we're styling as an evaluation. So as I said, these assessments, um, first about you, then about someone else, each week we're going to be reading and discussing and analyse and engaging with different content. At the end of the semester, what we want you to do is draw it all together. So you would have accumulated a, um, a large pool of resources and we want you to use those resources to develop an argument, a critical piece of um, analysis that engages with um, a specific research question, which is again, uh, I can't remember it exactly, but look in the assignments tab and you'll get the, the precise wording of that question. But in general sense, it's about the way that identity enables and constrains our journey through the social world. One final um, thing worth noting there um, is that this is a piece of assessment that is 2,000 words. So if you read it, wrote it as an essay, it would be a 2,000 word essay or equivalent. So what equivalent means here is that you are also free to approach the task in a variety of ways so that you might create something um, creative or artistic. It could be a, um, a painting or a song or a poem or a video or a photo essay or whatever it might be um, that explores that same guiding question about our, the way that our identity enables and constrains our journey through the world. It's probably worth saying that if you are taking that path, there will be a little bit of additional planning and development that you'll need to, to, um, to do just to sort of allow you to meet those assessment criteria, perhaps by developing a, an accompanying sort of written explanatory note that helps us to, um, to understand the painting or poem or song or whatever it might be that you've developed. But again, this is something that we will come back to in much greater detail as we work our way through the semester. I'm really just sort of seeding the idea here. So you might want to start thinking about um, how you might approach some of these ideas. Um, so just as we sort of get closer to the to the end, I think, as I said from the beginning, there are a few, um, there are threads that run through this course and there are concepts that are going to be important that we return to over and over again as well. I guess the big ones are around self and identity and agency. So when we talk about self, we're talking about how um, people discern and distinguish him, her, them um, from others. So this is the sort of um, view we hold 
of ourselves in our own head at any given moment. This can involve categories, objects and experiences. So we say recollection, but memory is going to be another one of these themes, the way that memory um, allows us to give um, logic to our experiences and to turn them into, a, into some kind of um, story or narrative. Um, but it's very much about, from your perspective, how you understand this part of your being. Um, as I alluded to memory, it's something that also evolves and changes over time as well. So how we understand ourselves on this journey. We're all in um, a university setting. We, this is the uh, preparation in many ways for the next um, episodes and phases of your lives and careers as well. So thinking about uh, change and change over time can be really useful. Um, I guess, and this is important for us in this course, we're also wanting to think about the self in relation to the world more generally. Um, so again, we'll come back to these ideas in much greater detail. So that's a general sort of um, meditation on the idea of self. When we talk about identity, um, it's we're drawing our attention, I guess, to um, a set of relationships. And it's those parts of ourselves that are um, outward looking or that have a social um, dimension to them. So how do I understand myself and the person that I am in the world? For me, for others, through those kinds of relationships. Identity, as we're understanding it here, can be thought of as a kind of text or a narrative. Now that's not, when we talk about texts and narratives and stories, we're not using that to um, denigrate or deny these ideas, but in a lot of ways to, to prioritise them and to really give them um, a sense of focus. Um, but again, so this is where we're coming to in the first assessment task as well. When we talk about identity, we're also picking up on the idea that each of us possess and embody um, a multiplicity of identities. Sometimes they're complementary and at other times they feel contested. Um, we can feel quite um, constrained in our ability to tell stories about who we are and we're often very mindful of our audience and the way that those accounts could be received by others. So what that means in practice is that we're constantly engaging in this process of both revealing and concealing elements of these accounts of who we are in the world. We become very um, adept at uh, juggling that process about knowing what part of us gets put on show um, and what part of us is sort of bracketed, bracketed out or, or moved to the side. So being mindful of that from the get-go can be really useful. And finally, what are the implications of all this for agency or freedom? So at the very beginning, I talked about agency and freedom as this ability to make meaningful choices and to have those choices in, in some way or another um, come to fruition. We want to think about human beings as agents in the world. So people who are being influenced by the social world, but who are also seeking to influence it as well. We're coming at this from a perspective of there are different experiences of this. Sometimes we might feel like we have tremendous control over those choices, at other times much less. So thinking critically about that can be really useful. Um, and I think just to finalise this idea is that these um, concepts and these experiences are always um, experienced through a kind of tension. So it's about freedoms and constraints. Um, so I think very few people, there may be some, but I can't, none come to mind, um, are completely free or are completely constrained in their ability to, um, to give an account of who they are or to influence or to present a sense of self. So this is always about degrees, it's about opportunities and compromises and challenges. So trying to capture some of that complexity um, is what this is all about. I guess too, if you think about these questions and the overall logic of the course, this is where we wanna to get to in that final assessment where in a tentative way, we can start to offer some um, informed positions about the nature of these constraints and the nature of these opportunities to add sense of selfhood and where we fit in the world. That went on for much longer than I thought, but um, once again, I would just like to say welcome to week one of the course. 
Um, it's going to be an interesting journey this semester, new modes of delivery, and new modes of um, accessing and sharing information. But I think um, the subject matter will do some of the heavy lifting for us because it's. I think it's very interesting. Um, and this is very much an invitation for you to jump in, um, to share, to listen, to engage, and to develop some thinking about these ideas. Have a look at the readings. Have a look at the assessments and we'll see you in the online discussion spaces. Thanks.